Hello, this is Jay from Jay Wanders Out. Welcome to my channel. I am here walking around a park on a little slight north side of Hamburg. It's a beautiful park. There's a planetarium in the back. It's really nice. I, we went there actually for a show about the Northern Lights and it's beautiful. It makes everyone there want to go to Canada or Iceland and book a vacation so we could go see the Northern Lights. But uh, today I thought I would discuss what you all think are going to be the complications of the whole coronavirus situation in regards to a through hike some would say what i'm going to say is kind of heartless i don't know i realize a lot of people have died from this already and it's a pretty dire situation um there's a lot of people who think nothing of it and there's some people who think the world's gonna fall but i think of course it's gonna be something in between but the one thing that everyone shouldn't be able to deny is that it will complicate our lives in one way or another. Whether you're going to wind up somehow self-quarantining for two weeks or as some people have done, say you'll self-quarantine for two weeks and not do it. But how does this implicate a thru-hike? How is it complicated? So the first thing I can think of is this disease, of course, is minor for the young. And I've even seen in one Facebook discussion one person saying oh yeah I'm gonna get it but I'll survive so I don't care I'll do whatever I want but that is just a horrible way to see things the fact is from my through hike I would say a good half or more of the trail angels out there were older um, a lot of people were retired so they enjoyed giving rides and they enjoyed talking to people from all over the country and all over the world and it's it may impact whether you'll see as many people willing to pick up hikers just because the hiking community is from all over the world um, each week obviously right now it's becoming less and less or it's becoming more limited because people from china can't necessarily get into the united states now south korea iran italy last year I actually met an iranian who was through hiking um, didn't meet any Italians, or two years ago rather, but uh, it's going to impact all of them, the people who have been planning, and it's, it's pretty hard. Um, it's got to be pretty hard. Another problem that may come off for through hikers is just the lack of availability or resupply. Right now, there's just no hand sanitizer. I thought because of the limitation of hand sanitizer, I thought I'd go online and buy a bunch of little ones. I can just give them out at the southern cdt trailhead when i get there but no can't buy any so how many hikers are actually gonna start with no hand sanitizer or it's a kind of makeshift hand sanitizer i don't know things could get better in a few weeks but there are people starting now and I, i'm curious what they are doing to overcome that Besides hand sanitizer, there's shortages in all kinds of things. Um, I'm sure you'll be able to find toilet paper because each hiker is not going to carry too many. But are they going to be able to find spam packets as easily as prior hikers? Are they going to find mashed potato packets, ramen? Of course, a lot of the typical backpacking foods are typical prepping foods. So you'd see those go pretty quickly. and. Even with through hikers, you'd find some of the supply would be gone. And I wonder how it looks in the stores along the trails right now. One thing funny in Germany, they have a saying, they call it hamster buying when you panic buy and hoard a bunch of things. Um, what's funny is in the interpretations of some of the German websites, it said because of the coronavirus panic, people are buying hamsters. And I thought, what? What are they talking about buying hamsters? But Tina told me what it meant before I saw it. But it's funny that the a German news, news website actually made fun of that themselves and talked about how people kept buying hamsters but they're not buying gerbils or, or lions or random pets. It's pretty funny. But I'll show you some pictures of the interpretations. It's very odd. But yeah, so if you hear hamster buying, that's that's what that means. And here in Germany, I just went to a DM. It's like another Walgreens type store. It's a little further from where I'm staying and no hand sanitizer, no sanitizing soaps either. I even looked around a little bit. They had regular soap and not 
the antibacterial soaps. I don't know, I guess people really want those over the normal soaps, but no hand sanitizer at all, again. As of right now, in Hamburg, there are eight cases uh, in the province. I think in the city, there are maybe five or six. I lost track. The scary thing right now for Tina is she's planning to do the CDT, and she's going to fly out of here to the U.S. in early April. But just overnight, Germany counted 150 more cases, and Italy, a week before, was... 200 or so and then they just exploded within a matter of a week and then all of a sudden we're banned from entry and all these other places so it's entirely possible that within a week two weeks that the u.s could stop everyone from germany or sweden coming in unless they were citizens you never know i'm sure that prospect is pretty horrible thought for a lot of international travelers who planned Quite a bit. There was one girl on a German PCT website. She said she planned for this. She sold a bunch of her stuff. She quit her job and everything. And then now it's uncertain whether she'll be able to through hike. And it's a similar situation for Tina right now. She has a six month break from her work. But what's she going to do if she can't go to the US? She thought about hiking the Camino, but uh, I heard. Uh, I don't know, Spain's not doing that well either right now. Everything's up in the air. Nobody knows what's going to happen. And things change so quickly that you can make plans. And like I said, within a week, everything could just be thrown out the window. Crows are everywhere. The other possibilities, of course, are someone gets infected in a store that's along a main thru-hiker route or a hostel or a hotel and it all gets shut down. And places that hikers were counting on crazy loud geese so places people are counting on are just all of a sudden going to be closed and i don't know i guess on gut hooks people have to keep track of that but it's pretty unpredictable what's going to happen I know at this time that people are through hiking the AT and they started even a month ago and they're still going. But how are things for them right now? I'm sure things haven't gotten as crazy, but within a month from now, even two months from now, when the typical PCT through hiker starts, how are things going to be? Are Scout and Frodo still going to stay open? I considered the idea that those two are not the youngest people, so. Is it in their benefit to stay open and have 50 people there at a time each day or 35 each day from all over the world? Yeah, I don't know, it's up to them, but I mean, it would be no surprise if they shut down for this season or if they, I don't know, it's hard to tell what's gonna happen. It's entirely possible someone shows up and gets sick and then the whole house will have to be shut down and all these people that were counting on it can't all of a sudden it may be better if they just close up now and have all the through hikers make prior arrangements that are more set but so difficult to predict what's going to happen right now it's it's all up in the air it's a weird year and what's going to happen three four months from now when this just breaks out everywhere and there's going to be isolated communities everywhere it's the only way to keep it so it doesn't spread so quickly that overwhelms the hospitals or affects any of the people with a weakened immune system or prior problems or any of the elderly people. I don't know. There's actually a pretty good post on the CDT 2020 group. There was a person, I, I believe he was 72 or 74. He was planning on doing the CDT this year, but he said he's canceling it because he's had a history of pneumonia before. And if you're 72 and you've had pneumonia before, might be best to just stay at home, ride this out for a few months. Who knows? I don't know. Some people are saying through hiking the best thing you could do because you're off in the woods by yourself. But that's only true four or five days of the week. Other than that, you're in town. You're always eating out. You're going to grocery stores, staying at hostels, just packed full of people. 
who knows? And who knows if these hostels can even have hand sanitizer ready. <laughs> So what do you all think? What 2020 through hikers out there think about what's going to happen, what their plans on, whether they're going to start, where you're from, just all that. I'm curious what everyone's thoughts are on the situation because they have to be thinking about it. I know if I was, I'd be thinking about it, but I'd be kind of really, really hoping nothing happened just because all that planning, selling the house and everything, I probably would have gone anyway, regardless. It's just some people literally can't if they're from another country, so I don't know. I mean, it's entirely possible that the entire 2020 through hike year is going to be out the window. People that have already started, they may have to stop and turn around as more places shut down. I don't know, it's just so much to think about. I've been reading news like crazy and just watching YouTube videos and it's a lot to think about. Um, I don't worry about it. But I do, I do wonder if I should just try to fly home earlier, actually. Tina had mentioned that uh, the option's still there for me to fly home earlier. And she's actually planning on flying into the States about a week earlier than originally planned. Just because we thought, I don't know, in a week, who knows, things could get crazier. But in the next two weeks from now, it could just as well go completely insane at some point it seems like just every country is going to block entry from every other country except for their citizens check out all these hills these are mole hills isn't that crazy i've never seen this before i guess they're all over in hamburg and west of here because it's really flat and it doesn't really get super cold so they survive they are definitely not in versburg where we went just because it gets much colder in the winter but look at that it's crazy. You could see it all throughout. I really want to see one, but the chances of seeing one during the day are slimmer. <laughs> I don't know, but it's crazy. You could see all the way out. There's more. Pretty wild, huh? I actually don't know where I am in the park. Oh, I see the planetarium. Okay. The sad part is when I see these molehills, one of the thoughts that come to my head is, yeah, I haven't seen Incredibles 2 yet. I gotta see that movie sometime. Any through hikers down there watching this, please feel free to comment below on what your plans are, whether you're gonna start, and what you'll do if you come to any problems with rides or resupply, things like that. Tough situation for you, so I hope things go well. And at least on the CDT, I'll try my best to get more hand sanitizer. <laughs> so if you see me, you can ask me for some. I'll have some wet ones wipes so I can give those to you, but I don't know. I might have just have a whole bunch of Everclear or something. But yeah, um, good luck to you all out there. And I uh, hope you all are safe and well because it's a weird time in the condition of the world, really. I guess for our generation, we haven't seen it. So I will talk to you all later. Have a good day.